Hi Chargeheads, I'm just about getting rusty and uh, go and see Ralph because he's got an update for me on the TVR. It seems like it's been probably about a good month uh, since I've seen uh, Wedgie and Ralph and really got a proper update. Um, so really, um, you know, it's, it's taken such a long time. I started this project two, over two years ago. Didn't get the batteries and everything till I looked, it was June. I've already spent 50 grand in labor cost to Ralph and in parts. And soon you'll see how far we've got. I think it would make most people cry. And I must admit, it hasn't made me cry yet. <laughs> Um, but certainly, you know, it, it is it is worrying. But um, let's go and have a look to see how we're getting on. But I should today find out a final cost, roughly, and uh, a time frame, which is what I certainly want. And I'm sure you guys and maybe two girls uh, want it as well. So let's go and see Ralph and see what he's uh, got for an update for us. So we've got an array of wiring, Ralph, on the table yeah what you've basically got is a car on a table um, <laughs> and one of the interesting developments is the bit that you've just recently bought which is the EV controls T2C and that's the the brains that really drives all the the Tesla equipment over there and we can see the the output here on the uh, on an iPad yeah so if I turn the ignition on you'll see various things wake Ooh, up yeah the and down. the rest of it nice uh, we can see the system, the state, uh, the status of the system. Uh, what we're doing for testing purposes is we're applying high voltage, but a very safe way. Right. So we're actually using a, a power supply that's got current limits and all the rest of it, and we're just going to run it up to just over 200 volts to start off with. Right. Uh, just to check the thing, that everything's working. So if I switch that on there, um, and it won't deliver more than uh, a couple of amps, so it's all very, very safe. Right. Um, got it. And we can see all the readings there, so it's, yeah, it's, it's got the voltage it? there. Yeah. Uh, we can see the accelerator position, um, so that moves. Uh, ah, yeah. There. Yeah. Um, so all the inputs basically come up on that screen, yeah. so you know it's all working. And the the brains on the vehicle that, um, are in several ECUs, and they're all interconnected with a CAN network. So we've got a twisted pair wire, and they're twisted to cut down electrical noise to make sure we don't get. Okay. Uh, signal loss out of it. Right. And on here we can see the can high and can low signals coming through, so we can just check that's all working correctly. Now, one of the challenges you get when you're assembling a car like this is different modules from different suppliers try to talk in different ways, and they'll, they'll, the messages will collide on the CAN bus. They might try and talk at different speeds on the CAN bus, and there'll be conflicts on there. Especially when I choose the different <laughs> items. I'm trying to, trying to get the best items. Yeah, which don't necessarily go together. No, no. Um, but so that can be quite thankfully, giant. Thankfully, that's where you come in, Ralph. So by looking at what's actually happening on the CAN bus, we can see which bits are causing any errors and then adjust them to make sure they all start working together. Okay. At the moment, we've got an issue with the BMS, uh, which is crashing the CAN bus. We'll get that sorted out and then they can all talk happily. Um, what we've got at the moment is the uh, EV controls unit is talking to your Tesla unit there. Okay. So you've changed to uh, an original Tesla drive card in the inverter. We can actually look at the, the info. So this is now talking to that inverter right. um, and getting the information out of it. So in a moment, you'll see a load of data coming up here. Uh, any moment now, there we go. So we're getting the ID and the software level and all the rest of it. That's coming out of there. So that's talking via the CAN bus between the control unit and the inverter over there. So the EV controls T to C, that's going to be the brains for the motor. Yeah. BMS is obviously going to be talking to the batteries, the battery management system, talking to the batteries, making sure everything, all the levels are as they should be. And uh, yeah, basically. Uh, and absolutely. And they all work together. And so does the charge controller as well. So they all right. talk on the CAN bus. So, that will understand what the battery uh, state of charge is from that. Yeah. So you'll understand how much welly you can give it. Um, it will reduce power level if you try and run the battery too flat. So it will right. stop you actually pressing the oh, Okay, so there'll be like a limp mode then. Sort of yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, um, right. We can also set different drive modes. So 
Uh, we've got some control switches here, so we've got a neutral drive and reverse. Currently it's in neutral, you'll be glad to know. Yep. Um, and we can set different modes, so when you put your foot on the accelerator, you can either have massive performance or we can make it more gentle so you can get better range out of it. Yep. All sorts of little things we can set up like that, so it's a very configurable system. Um, the charge controller, when you plug the charging gun in, that sends a wake up request into that. That will then send a message out on the CAN bus that wakes all of these up. Because when you start charging it, the battery management's got to keep all the cells balanced and yep. make sure it's all working. That's that right. talks to the charge controller to make sure it's getting the right voltage going into the battery pack. But also, your vehicle controller wakes up and controls things like the cooling fans. And the cooling pumps right, and stuff okay. like that. So all of the system has to work together to make that all work. Okay. So there's a lot going on. It's quite a busy system. Yes. And we've got the contactors there. So course. the contactors, now both the BMS and the uh, EV control system both have the capability of driving contactors. Right. Um, because we've had to split your vehicle into two battery packs, we've got a slightly complicated way of con controlling the contactors so they all work. Right. They have to come on when you're driving the vehicle and when you're charging it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. What's okay. interesting with this charge controller is this can also do vehicle to load as well. Yes, yeah, that's the main reason I chose it because you know that seems to be the. Uh, and it's incredibly feature. small. It's so much smaller than other charge control units. It's, it's quite amazing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing how things are progressing. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be so many more items. I think uh, there's a lot of brands out there. I won't mention any now uh, until until there's sponsorship involved, of course. But, uh, <laughs> Very um, but yeah, no, there's lots of uh, brands out there now that are you know helping make EV conversions yeah. easier and being able to yeah have more functionality. I think I was. I was seeing uh, a Porsche uh, on the socials recently and they had the op option of having a fully auto and a manual option. Yeah. So I'm not sure if anyone's seen that one, but that, yeah, loads of stuff going on, which is really exciting. It, so, yeah. it probably is an exciting time. So hopefully we'll get the motor turning quite soon and uh, we'll see another progress report. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, as soon as you get that, uh, as soon as you think you're going to get it turning, Give me a call. Yeah, um, I believe we've got the battery boxes um, in a different room. Yeah, so in our battery build area, we've got the back battery batteries. You're botching it up. <laughs> Can't even talk properly. Shall we go and have a look at them? Let's go and have a look at the battery. Go on, let's go and have a look at them. Let's go and have a look. Three battery boxes. I thought we only had two. Yeah, yeah. So that's your front battery box that yeah. goes in the engine bay, and that's got the main contactor block. So yeah. you've got your. Uh, negative, positive, and pre charge relays in there. The battery management will also go in there, and this yeah. also acts as a heat sink to take some of the heat away. And you've got the cool plates in there, cooling, cooling plates. plates are in there, all the cooling pipes come out underneath. There's it. some batteries in this one. There's some batteries in this. So, this is the lower deck of your rear battery box. Yeah. Uh, and what we're looking at is exactly how we fit the, um, the bus bars in there. Because you're so space constrained in that vehicle, it's mm. really difficult to get everything to fit in there. So we've really compromised on how much space there is available. So assembling it is actually quite tricky. So we're looking at different techniques we can use and what shape bus bars we need to make to uh, make that all fit. Yeah, because so we, we were constrained on space because of the roof mechanism of the TVR and also the rear seat, making sure we can yeah, bring it back far enough. Yeah. Um, so it's quite tricky. So that's the lower so deck. I've just gone for less battery, shouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then that's the top part of the rear battery pack. Yeah. So there's two decks. And the reason oh, right. they're in two decks is because they've got cooling plates. Uh, although they're a really good design, there's always a small chance that the cooling pipes could leak. Right, okay. And with two decks there, we didn't want any risk of any leaking going into the high voltage stuff. No. So they're in two set physically separated packs that are joined with um, cables externally. Yeah. Uh, and that means that if there is any chance of any leak, it's, uh, it goes away from the batteries and it doesn't enter any of the high voltage system. So that's why there's two of those. Um, it also means that because it's separated out, we need uh, a set of contactors in the rear box. Uh, and a set of contactors in the front box. We also need a service disconnect and fuses in both boxes as well. Yeah. So as soon as the vehicle is switched off or it detects a crash, nah. um, the battery boxes are isolated and all the orange cables in the vehicle are completely isolated from high voltage. So that it's, it's always safe when uh, it's either switched off or you've crashed into a hedge. 
Let's hope, let's hope it doesn't come to that. But yeah, no, safety, very important, especially when it comes to batteries. You know, you see all these things in the press. Mm. Well, the press, they, they love to find them, don't they? Yeah. Even they're, if they're a Renault diesel, uh, you know, capture in in a flooded area, they like to That find. was a good story, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do no. with an EV, but it no. became an anti-EV story. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Like everything. So yeah, making sure that this is absolutely Shall we say watertight? Is that, yes. is that apt? Yeah. Uh, yeah, watertight in, in that respect uh, to make sure that it's as safe as possible because, you know, not only a reliable TVR but a safe one, which was what it was all about. So, so yeah, we, we're definitely getting there. And um, you, you seem to think uh, a, late, a late summer but, or a, a, early, uh, early autumn yeah. uh, in terms of time frame, which is good news. Yeah, and, well, uh, it's starting to go together now. Now, obviously, with your project, we've it's been a fascinating journey because we've explored a lot of different options with your project, mm. more than we would normally do with most projects. But it has been really, really interesting. But it's, it's really good to see this stage where all of the stuff's coming together now. Yeah, no, I can definitely see that, especially with the motor not far off from running, which is yeah. great news. So I can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see that, Ralph. Me too. I'll have a big, extra happy smile. <laughs> and I'm sure you will do too. Absolutely. So okay, let's let's. Um, I don't think there's many updates on the TVR, but I think I think I better go and check her out anyway to, okay. to remember what it's all going into. Yeah, uh, let's go and do that. Remind yourself of its stunning beauty. Hmm. Here she is. It's like uh, it's like she's never left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've got the uh, yeah the uh, drive shafts in. Oh, you've got the you've got the mount in there. Oh, we haven't seen that. Let's uh, let's go in for a closer look. And in fact, I'll use the other camera. So is it connect? It's actually connected. Oh yeah. Yeah, you didn't you didn't show me that earlier. Not that we you know this is a rehearsal or anything, but okay, that looks clever stuff. So all of that's mounted without making any changes to the original chassis. That is unbelievably good. I love that. Yeah. All these little uh, things to, uh, yeah, to make sure that the DVLA don't wrap our knuckles or wrap your knuckles or just don't let us register it mainly. So what are these things then? Oh. So those are uh, the mounting points. So this is where the rear battery box box will be uh, got you. mounted. It's also got other mounting points as well, so it becomes yeah. quite a, a solid lump um, structurally. Uh, and the same with the front one. But it means that this way we can preserve the, the, the chassis. Yeah. Um, and um, no, no modifications to the chassis. Oh, I need to come in and do, do a bit more touching up um, well, before it... The, got a bit more work to do, yeah. No, good stuff. No, thanks for giving us an update, Ralph. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to, I'm hoping, the motor turning. Yeah, should be soon. Watch this space. So I'm um, leaving Ralph's, left Ralph's. I thought I'd just have a quick kind of video update. As you might be able to tell, I'm not quite as lively. Um, it's not down to energy levels. It's I'll be, I'll be honest, it's, it's down to enthusiasm from a financial point of view. It's, it's really hitting hitting hard, the, the costs, uh, going through the costs earlier with Ralph. You know, I'm already at 50. And as you could probably tell by that video, there is a load to go, a load to go. And it's, it's the commitment there, my commitment's there. It's just the financial element is, is quite pressing. Um, I mean, realistically, to get it roadworthy, probably talking another 20k. And when I found that out, I had to walk away for a bit after having the conversation with Ralph because I just needed just to just walk away, you know, uh, not get too frustrated with it uh, more than I already have. Um, so, and bearing in mind that extra 20k, it's still gonna be the same inside. It'll have a couple of seats, steering wheel. Um, there's going to be a lot of work to do still. Great news for people who are enjoying the build. There's going to be a lot more build work. And I think I'm going to have to call in a few favours and do a, quite a bit myself in terms of getting it up to a level where I'm happy to show people the car. 
Um, it's it's going to be a bit rough and ready for a while. Um, I don't expect I'll have it on the road really until start of next year because I don't think I'll be able to afford in the insurance um, and all the other little bits to make sure it's all road legal. So it's not the best update, I'll be honest with you. But we, I'm still plugging away. So is Ralph. Ralph's, Ralph's really soldiering on with it. Um, I know he's got his frustrations with it in terms of time frame and stuff. Um, so that's where we are. Um, bit of drama, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, keep watching. I'm going to still be updating. We've still got lots of interesting things coming on the channel. Um, just uh, agreed with... Uh, Peter Melville at Hevra we're going to do a few more videos because I think they're really really good to get that message of EVs and breaking a few myths um, and I'm sure there'll be other EV events and smaller videos there's, there's going to be some interesting stuff coming up on the TikTok and the shorts so check that out but thanks for staying with us uh, so far thanks for subscribing please like and subscribe please share I'm sure there's lots of people that would love to see the trials and tribulations to what we've got to now. Um, so yeah, most importantly, keep being a charge head and enjoy electric cars. Be an, be an enthusiast. That's what it's all about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.